Welcome to the Art Studio Insights Podcast, where we demystify the creative process and exchange ideas with career-minded artists. We are your hosts, Adriana May and Jackie Sanders. We are two emerging artists sharing forward the advice and business lessons we have learned along our journey. And if you are not already, please subscribe. This will help other creatives like you find our podcast and you'll be (laughs) notified when we drop a new episode every week. On this week's episode, we're going to be discussing the idea of creating before you consume. But first, Adriana, what have you been up to? So the weather here in North Carolina, which is where we're both located, has been absolutely gorgeous. So nice. It's almost hard to get into the studio. I don't say that lightly because there is just, I mean, it's spring is everywhere. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Uh, The weather's great. There's flowers blooming everywhere. It's absolutely magnificent. (laughs) I've spent a lot of time just reconnecting with nature, which is one of my main sources of inspiration anyways, to recharge energy. Um, Been doing some gardening, uh, trying to replace some plants that didn't make it through the winter. (laughs) May or may not be at fault with that one. (laughs) And now's like the perfect time to be out there because it's still warm but it's not humid and now it feels like every day we get like 20 more minutes of sunshine it's like it's It's excellent it's still light out I'm used to like February where it's pitch black by four o'clock and it's terrible so it's really (laughs) fun (laughs) yeah I mean it's it's been absolutely fabulous and um I've had time to go out and do a few other outdoorsy activities uh recently went kayaking was one of my closest friends and We just had a blast. Like you said, it's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just, it's just perfect. But how about you? Uh, Very similar. I feel like my studio time has definitely decreased a bit, Um, especially in the winter. It was kind of that silver lining blessing of winter because it's so dark and cold all the time. So you don't really want to be outside. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll just spend the entire night in the studio, but now trying to like restructure my schedule because it is so beautiful out. I'm in volleyball leagues that are picking up again. Um, just the going on runs. I live right near the North Carolina art museum, which has been beautiful. I just got done like a five mile hike this morning. Um, so just, yeah, really getting outside into nature, listening to audiobooks or podcasts or music while I'm out there, or just soaking up the sounds of nature and bringing yeah. that like influence into the studio has been so nice. And I know Adriana and I talk about this all the time. We actually just did an Instagram live this past weekend, um, on both of our Instagram channels, really just talking about how important those outside of the studio influences are for your creative practice because vital. Yeah. It's really one of those things. I used to almost approach it as being uh, like polar opposite, like pulling against each other things of, okay, if I'm focusing on my fitness, if I'm focusing on being outside, then that's taking away from studio time. And from a time sense, yes, it is, but you really need that balance because that's what fuels at least for me, like my creative practice, my studio endurance, so to speak, to be on my feet, constantly moving, having that energy, it comes from being outside, being in nature. Um, so especially now the weather being so nice, it's, that's a total game changer. Still haven't put as much studio time in as I want, but soaking up. Yeah, (laughs) it's definitely a, you know, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy creative practice. Oh, yeah. So it definitely feeds from one thing into the other. Um, so for both of us, that's very important aspect of our lives. And again, go check out our Insta Live if you're interested in, in seeing our uh, brief chat about that. So along those same lines, today's episode is going to be about the idea behind Create Before You Consume and how some of those external influences could or cannot affect your creative practice. This is a conversation that we recorded a little bit ago, so we really hope that you enjoy it. Let us know what you think, and here we go. We are so, so excited for everyone to be listening and to go on this journey with us. First topic, Adriana, what do we got? (laughs) We are going to be talking about the maxim behind create before you consume and how it applies to well 
artists, regardless of uh, your discipline. All right. So diving right in, my first interpretation of that topic, of course, is first thing in the morning, I felt like I have been very intentional lately, not always successful with it, but first thing when you wake up, like everyone knows about the scroll in the morning, oh, the infinite social scroll. media, the every type of media, creative output of others, influence is right at your fingertips. From TikTok to Instagram to Pinterest to Facebook. And then by that point, you go back to TikTok, back to Instagram, and just keep doing the cycle. That's if you leave any of them. That's right. You might get stuck too. <laughs> and it's like first thing in the morning, you wake up and you see the notifications mm -hmm. and I'll say, oh, you know, somebody liked your post or left a comment. And you're just like, oh, I'm just going to check it out real quick right before I brush my teeth. And before you know it, <laughs> three hours last later. <laughs> Even like 20 minutes later, though, like having that be like the first thing on your mind can be so difficult. It is. And it's one of those things, too, where it's like when you look at it, it could be inspiring depending what you're looking at. Yeah. It might be something where like somebody left a nice comment, something encouraging, something yeah. you're working on, someone's networking with you, someone you were, you know, trying to get a hold of. But what about those times when it's kind of on the negative side of things and it just kind of derails the rest of your day? Right. And even if it's not negative, but there's just like so much noise out there. And I think everyone knows that. If you're like, okay, I just scrolled for 10 minutes. <laughs> you're like, what benefit did I get from this? Exactly. It's terrible. And, and then not only that, it's like if you got stuck looking, say, at you know, an artist that's more successful, maybe at a higher level than you, you know, imposter syndrome kicks in and we all forget about, you know, I've heard it called the overnight 10 year success. You know, you're like, oh, oh this yeah, person yeah. is so famous. I'll never be like them. And it's like, well, they might be blowing up now, but they've been working on their craft for over 10 years. Right. It just, yeah. And, but then you kind of forget, and you're like, oh, will I ever be like them? I don't think I'll ever level up enough. And then it just kind of brings you down, and then you try to show up to your studio practice, and you just bump. Right. And I feel like that, I mean, it goes in every type of comparison game way, whether it's, okay, creative creation. That's a <laughs> time to say We're just roll with that. Yeah. <laughs> whether it's a creative output, whether it's creative ideas, but I mean, even just from your own mental sanity too i mean creating before you consume in terms of like we are all aware like we only have a certain amount of energy during the day so like all right the amount of energy that you're putting into just consuming someone else's work is then draining from the attention that you can have on, on your own craft so even if you're not playing the comparison game even if you're just the ultimate fan girl which i feel like Every time I'm on social media, I'm just like hyping everyone up. I'm like the ultimate cheerleader for other people. Absolutely. But then it's like, I just put all this energy into others and you have to remember to like put that back into yourself and back into your work. And too. if you drain it, right. then what's left? Exactly. Exactly. So let's discuss how do we get around that? How do we, you know, <sighs> create before you consume? What do we create? Let's discuss anything and everything. So I felt like for me really deciding, I forget where I heard the quote and hopefully someone can remind me if you've also read similar books, but they said somewhere where basically um, make sure that the first thing that you do during the day is think your own thoughts. I like that. And that was one of the things for me that really made me, because everyone knows like, it's not great to scroll social media first thing when you wake up, like, you know, you want to like, have your own creative energy, but I used to do it every day anyway. And so really thinking, okay, am I thinking my true genuine thoughts first thing in the morning, or am I just letting myself be consumed by others and letting other people dictate my mind, essentially like yeah. hijacking your thoughts before you even realize it and set the tone for your day. And right. Just, again, if it's positive, maybe it's not so terrible, but a lot of times it's just bad yeah it's not really what you're going for so another solution that i found for that and obviously you can find a multitude of books on this and <laughs> we're not going to go down the rabbit hole not, not today not today <laughs> we both have very full bookshelves that we will definitely dive into in the future oh we definitely will. so many <laughs> no, no. bookworms you're yeah. right yes <laughs> um 
But essentially, one of the other things, you know, it's basically to try to create a morning routine. And there's a variety yeah. of things. And we'll definitely make an episode all about routines. The but morning routine. Oh, my God. I mean, <laughs> they're helpful. But one of them, for example, is even if you're like, well, I don't know that I have enough time, you know, to create. I have a full-time job. I have kids. I have, like, all these other competing responsibilities. Yeah. Well, you can wake up a couple minutes earlier. This is something almost anybody can do. And just say, even if it's just 10 minutes. Yeah. You you just bring out a journal. I mean, a recommendation I give a lot of our visitors at the studio, I say, have a journal, just basic journal. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Sitting on your night table and yeah. a pen. Wake up in the middle of the night or whenever you wake up in the morning and have all these ideas flowing. Just scribble them down. You right. know, it doesn't have to be legible. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be shareable. Right. Um, maybe it's a doodle. Maybe it's a sketch. Maybe it's even just like a phrase that you might want to use for a title or an idea or like a okay, song title. A song title. <laughs> a song yeah. stuck in your head. That happens. And I, I think that's the thing too. Like it doesn't even have to be necessarily the medium that you work in. Like obviously, I mean, maybe not obviously. I know one of us has been known to have paints right next to their bed. <laughs> But that's another story for another time. <laughs> but even having like, I, for me, like writing is such a big part of my painting process. And so it doesn't even have to be like the medium that you think you work in, but it might be, yeah, an idea or a poem or a thought or like some crazy dream that you're like, I want to remember this. Yeah. And just putting it down because that those pure thoughts are really where you need to get back to once you're in the creative mode to like harness and utilize and develop them. Exactly. And a lot of times what will happen is, I mean, it can be as simple as a bulletized list of things that are kind of stuck in your head and you just want to, you just want to dump them on paper. A brain download. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just let it go. Maybe it's, I have to pick up someone. I have to do laundry. I have to do this. Have, that's fine. Let it all go. Let some of those thoughts, you know, make their way into paper, you know, unclutter yeah. your brain essentially. And that way, when you're ready to create, whether it's in the morning or later on, and you just want to kind of expand your practice, right. you don't have all these, you know, nagging thoughts also floating around in your head, distracting you from, oh, wait, actually, I can pause this. Maybe instead yeah. of binge watching, guilty as charged, of course, <laughs> binge watching too many Netflix episodes, right? Maybe right. you say like, okay, I'm going to watch one less episode. We're not asking you to sacrifice too much people. <laughs> um, maybe I'm going to watch baby one steps. less. Yeah, baby steps. One less episode. You know, if morning doesn't work, maybe I do it in the evening. And I'm just going to doodle. I'm just going to watch, even if it's just a YouTube video of somebody else doing something creative. Yeah. I'm going to read a book on the creative practice or, um, I don't know, drawing anything. Anything. Right. Anything that kind of builds into your creative practice. But most importantly is to start it in the day, if possible, before you get on your phone, just, just do something. Yeah, definitely. And something I think the idea go. of like taking it off the screen too, I mean, yes. social media and connecting with other people has so many benefits, but one thing, I mean, as so many of us know, like first thing in the morning or right before you go to bed, like that screen light, both from like your mental health standpoint, even just like keeping you alert at night can be really counteractive to like trying to go to sleep but also like having a notebook and pen rather than the notes app because I used right. to do that too like I used to just like write in my notes app but then I'd think of something write it have a flash of blue light in your face and then put it down and a notification five minutes that might come up right in the middle like of oh let me just check this email oh let me just check this and it's like no like cutting it all off exactly one thing um that i've been doing online i'm just gonna share with you all depending what type of phone you have you might want to google how to do this but one thing i've been doing with mine which has been working out pretty well so far yeah <laughs> it's essentially uh there's a setting on the phone where you can limit your screen so what i'll do is like i might be in the morning i might create something you know on paper and pen but then i'll go to social media and like keep up i have i've made friendships with folks that are in other countries so they're you know they're going to bed when i'm waking up kind of thing so i'll just say hi etc but before the infinite scroll can grab a hold of my attention for hours on end, um, there's a setting on my phone where for about an hour, it actually locks me out. Yes, you can override it, but still, that's not the point. <laughs> you have to consciously choose to, to override, override it, which then exactly. goes into like the internal 
debate of like, all right, am I choosing this? <laughs> I think even just that awareness is huge exactly. too. Yeah. And because sometimes you just you know. want to be on your phone or like you actually are doing something productive. Yeah. You're like, okay, great. Exactly. So instead of getting carried away, the yeah. phone actually will shut the screen. Yes, you can never write it, like I said, but it will shut the screen for about an hour in the morning. I think I have it set from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And that forces me to actually look away from the screen, go look at something else, grab a sketchbook, do some doodles, like I said, you know, do some rain downloads, etc. So if I started that earlier in the morning, then social media derailed me. That's an opportunity to cut that back again and then go back into analog mode, if you will, <laughs> um, before going back digital, if that makes sense. But at least that is a way to kind of pause it, and depending what kind of phone. You yeah. might have a setting similar to that. Or yeah. you have the discipline for it. That's true. I feel like I've definitely weaned myself off. I can't say I did it like cold turkey and I'm not like <laughs> perfect, but... Yeah, definitely the past couple months, I feel like I'm definitely more of like a discipline. More so, I just don't know how to use technology that well. So having all these <laughs> alarms and restrictions, I was like, I'll just put my phone in the other room and make sure it's loud enough to where my alarm will wake me up. I know you said that and it's like TikTok has the setting where you can have a log after an hour. Godsend. I mean, it's it's a beautiful TikTok setting. TikTok app itself. Yes, it does. No way. Yes, it does. So after oh, an hour, that's crazy. Yep. After that. an hour on the app, it can actually lock the screen and it asks you to enter a pen. I believe Whoa. it's like parental control. Oh, I still you use parental it control yourself. Yes, I do <laughs> because oh, you get sucked in and you just keep looking and looking, and that's one where, especially on TikTok, because they purposefully make it so you can't oh. see the time. I know, and all the music, and like so many great videos. Okay, some of them are train wrecks, but <laughs> you know, there's a lot of great content on there. So, so I've learned, at least for me, number one, I don't look at TikTok in the morning. Oh my gosh, no. Um, but even if I did, you know, maybe I'm having breakfast when I actually look at it. So I've already created at that point. I I I have it locked yeah. down after an hour, and once that limit comes on, again, you can override it, but then you have to make that conscious decision: Am I going to watch more than an hour? And, what value does it bring? Yeah, exactly. And are you really learning anything or is it just entertainment? That's true. I think it was a Tim Ferriss quote that I was reading. Um, I believe it was from 4-Hour Workweek where he was talking about like the biggest waste of time is when you're not actively being productive or not actively resting. It's that limbo in between, which I feel I like, that. and it's not always like scrolling social media. It might be, at least for me, like, Okay, if I'm kind of watching a movie or if I'm any point where you're kind of half there. And I think we all know that feeling where you're like, all right, this is my enjoying, relaxing time. But your brain is actually worried about all the things you're not doing. And that <laughs> should be, coulda, woulda. yeah, and that can be so like difficult to manage because you're never fully present. And especially from the Tim Ferriss quote perspective, like you're never fully resting. So you're not getting that rejuvenation, that energy boost that you need to be productive again. Or if you're being productive, but completely drained, like, no, listen to your body, listen to your mind and like actually rest. Because if, you, if you're doing something in three hours that could have only taken you an hour, that's a waste of your time. It is. And you're not fully focusing either on anything. Yeah. So at the end of it, you're like three hours past what And just not time. satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. And then you go back to the entertainment and the infinite scrolling or right. binge watching and you still don't feel satisfied. Right. So it's almost like make an election, you know, to choose what action you're going to take, like actively choose what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to bring it full circle of this, you want to actively choose to create before you open that phone up. Right. You know, and before you start looking at things and like, you know, like we're talking about, it doesn't have to be anything big. You don't have to make your next, you know, Mona Lisa on your next year. Yeah. It doesn't have to be anything like that, but it could be some entry. Again, nobody has to see it. It doesn't have to get posted on yeah. Facebook or Instagram or anything just for you. But do that first. Set your intentions for the day without going to, but just kind of set, yeah. you know, set your own tone before someone else does it for you. Right. And I think even like, aside from social media, aside from digital, like even outside influences too, when you're really diving into your studio, like, yes, there's something to be said about like looking at other professionals that 
maybe aspirationally you want to be at their level or like the old masters or like studying art history, I am definitely a proponent for that. Like that's great. But if you're constantly comparing yourself or like you think that you are easily pushed in a direction that you feel like you should be going in and it's not true to what you want to be doing, whether it's a style, whether it's a color scheme, whether it's a scale, then you're too easily influenced by other professionals or other artists, then trust like your own thoughts and your own inclinations as to how you want to create before opening up the art history book and saying, well, so-and-so told me I have to do this. Yes, you can learn skills. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can refine them. But I think there's also a magic of really just trusting your own gut and also just experimenting and playing and that's the best way that we learn because you can, I mean, over analysis paralysis is mm-hmm. I think such a killer for so many of us. Especially like, the creative process. Right. Like, Oh, I'm not perfect at this process yet. I can't even start an art piece using this style. Be like, well, in all the time you're doing research or over contemplating how you should do it or the details or the logistics, you could have made six different pieces that progressively got better and you learn better through those experiences anyway. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's before opening the book or, you know, the infinite scrolling, et cetera. It's let that true, that pure, you know, just fresh, freshly waking up in the morning. Yeah. Even if you're groggy and like, <laughs> so to get out of your first cup of joe uh, or frappuccino or whatever you're into, uh, tea, et cetera. Pretty um, pre-workout, um, you know, before, you know, you, you go down there. Um, yeah, just kind of try to be like, okay, let me just get something out of me before something else sets the tune for me. Yeah. Um, and then definitely like you were saying, instead of looking at somebody else's, you can always reference things later, et cetera, and kind of get inspiration or get ideas or look at techniques, but yeah. that very first, you know, essence of create before you consume. Yeah. Yeah, just just try to see what comes out of you. It doesn't have to look great. Yeah. It just needs to be you. I think that's the big thing too of like trusting your own instincts and not having expectations about what you're making. Exactly. And that's like one motto that once I started implementing that in my creative practice last year of like no expect or no excuses, but also no expectations. Where it's like, okay, I'm gonna do one drawing every single day for the entire year. Some days I might sit down and draw for an hour and a half and it's super complex and I develop into a larger piece. Some days I'm like, it's a circle. That's all I have. That's my creative output. Super profound and perfect. I know. And it's like a lopsided circle, even though I still use the stencil. It's pretty like impressive how terrible some of the drawings were, but then on the other side, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And so not having any excuses, um, but not having expectations, like a very liberating part of it. Yeah, and definitely with the excuses, that's what we brought up to earlier. The almost anybody can wake up 10 minutes earlier. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a lot. Like I said, like we're, you know, like we're talking about, you just let it out, let something out, genuine, just yours. Yeah. Freshly woken up, just let something out. It doesn't have to be right. three pages, 10 pages. It literally can just be like, you know, like Jackie would say, just a lopsided circle. Okay, fine. Yeah, two nods <laughs> and a smile and you're done. Right. Because that's how it starts. And I think really creating that like habit and routine is huge for both of us. Yeah, of like, okay, no expectations. It might just be I'm going to draw a circle every day this week. And then one day you might get a little bit more complex. Okay. One day you might decide to shade the circle into a sphere or like just establishing that practice and that discipline is what is the foundation for any creative practice. Practice, uh, what's the saying? Practice makes better. There you go. (laughs) Practice doesn't make perfect. It will never make perfect, but it will always make better. Because perfect is a moving target anyways. And then you're never going to reach it. One of my, I want to reference a lot of quotes on this podcast series. (laughs) Yes, we are. (laughs) Another one of my favorite quotes, you guys can't see it, but in my studio, I always have post-it notes with quotes literally everywhere (laughs) from books, from podcasts, from anything, just (laughs) post-it notes. They are my favorite. It's not very good for the environment. I'm working on it, but (laughs) they're biodegradable. What are you talking about? 
It's paper. Now they're plaster all over my walls. I don't mm-hmm. know. But they're organized though, yeah, so it's fine. <laughs> but <laughs> one of my favorite quotes that I've also heard this past year was, um, perfect is the lowest expectation you can hold for yourself because it's unobtainable. You said that in this one. I don't know who said it, but it said perfect is the enemy of done. It's true. Because even if you... Perfect can just be an excuse anyways. Right. Well, I'm a perfectionist, so... You're like, no. Then you never complete it. Just do it. See what happens. You know, throw it till it sticks. Yeah. They have a plan to it, right? <laughs> Evaluate. But and learn see how from it. it. Yeah. Learn from it. And then Evolve. do it again. Reiterate. Yeah. Like, did you think Da Vinci did, you know, all this wonderful, masterful works the first time? No. Probably. Oh, please. He probably did it, like, thousands of times. Yeah. Thousands of times. Sketches, backward sketches. Yeah, there's, like, a saying, um, it takes 10,000 hours to master anything. Oh, yeah. Practice, practice, practice. Right. And I think, again, that comes to discipline. It doesn't have to be the same scale. It doesn't have to be the same drawing or design itself. But having that consistent discipline, um, and especially prioritizing that before consuming the content of others exactly so jackie (laughs) where can we find you on social media so on all social media platforms i am jay sanders studio i am mainly on instagram um but i'm definitely on all other platforms um all my instagram stories a lot so if you want any behind the scenes studio videos that's where you can find me or my website jacquelinesanders.com how about you Instagram is definitely my main one. You can find me at Art. It's A-M-E-I-G-H art. <laughs> I know, not, not complicated at all. <laughs> um, my website is the same, at Art, And um, yeah, you can reach me through DMs. It's probably the fastest way. Yeah. Not as good as you on stories, but I am trying. We're getting there. We're, We're getting working there. on it. Yeah. So absolutely. definitely please send us messages on there. Let us know what you think of the episode. And then when you get your journal next to your bedside or wherever you decide to put it in the morning, take a picture and send it to us because we always love seeing people implementing all these strategies that we learned on, along the way that have helped us on our creative journey. And we want to share it forward with you guys. Yes, we do. All right, until the next one. See you guys. Bye. Bye.